Seeing life after that trip certainly feels nice. But the last trip felt weird. I, I mean, time travel already feels like I'm in the 60s during the summer of love, decked out on every mind-altering drug imaginable. But this time it felt like, well, the same thing, but I... if I had a bad trip. Was the time gate on Maya weaker in some way? I mean, I assumed the gates would otherwise be regularly maintained, but if everyone left, could they eventually break? Also, the gene pods I have seem to be getting too hot to the touch. I felt like I was going to let go of them by accident over the trip. Alright, to take stock. Where am I? I am on top of a mesa, and there are no railings. A great place to be when both suffering from vertigo and having a dizzy episode from time travel. There's a river in the distance, possibly Chaco River if this is indeed the Anasazi time. To get across this jump, I could jump. Oh well, in this condition, that would be incredibly stupid and dangerous. At least for the cenote pool back in the Mayan underground temple, there was a token wooden plank that I could walk on. Here, it's just nothing. Also, what's that bird sound? Do I hear a roadrunner? Eh, I never was good at telling bird types from their sounds. Hopefully, being able to do so won't be important anytime soon. Well, I could possibly use this to bridge the gap. This isn't as easy to stand on as the plank, but at least the chance of it snapping in half is slightly reduced, given the increased thickness lending to increased load-bearing capabilities. Those stones across the gap seem rather important. Looks like there may be a path to them around the mesa. I'll keep their relative location in mind. Nice, I have a lot of choices here. Unlike when I was in Egypt or in Maya, especially in Maya where I had a puzzle behind a locked door behind a locked door that was itself locked behind another puzzle, I can actually seem to go anywhere. I don't actually know what I want to do now. I'm actually kind of freaked out because I don't know where to start. Well, there is one place I can start, if not going there, at least looking there. Those buildings that are built into the cliffside. I must be some time in 1190 CE to 1270 CE for all the emphasis on this style, given how cool and unique it is. That building style of creating dwellings in a cliffside is actually from the end of their Anasazi period, from the end of their ancestral Pueblo period, which otherwise was lasting for several centuries in more open towns. Oh, that reminds me. Anasazi was coined by the Navajo as ancient enemy. Sometimes it is incorrectly translated as ancient ones. There is a lot of ground to cover on this slightly lower level of mesa that I'd like to look at first. I wonder if I can first, though, ascend this natural tower and get a better look at the area. Nice amount of wildlife here. For a more desert canyon, it still has its lively parts. The surviving ancestors of the Anasazi, such as the Hope, aren't too fond of Anasazi for obvious reasons, hence their preference for a less aggressive form of address. Still though, academically, it seems like the inertia of the word Anasazi remains in more archaeological discussions of this specific culture. But anyway, once very open, and surprisingly not all that focused on defense from the looks of it, 
The vid collapsed and turned inward. It had to focus on security a lot more through a combination of effects. Um, limited resources for droughts, potential infighting, uh, there's some marks of cannibalism, uh, external invasion. A change from constructs such as those that you see at Pueblo Bonito with their, you know, open kivas, ancient style apartment buildings connected with vast road networks and trade and all that super cool stuff to these almost citadel-like fortresses that are built into cliffs, which are quite obviously much safer from attack. If I could get on top of the cliff, I might even find an intact watchtower. What is this contraption? This looks kind of cool. Oh, the lever makes the stones move. It's hard to make out how, though. I wonder if there's anything behind it that might clue me in on how this is working. Oh, a sun dagger. Wait, is this a customizable calendar? Okay, this is a configure yourself version of the more rely on the time of year style of sun dagger normally found in Chaco Canyon. Sandstone slabs were aligned in such a way that different times of the year had the dagger appear in different parts of the spiral. The dagger would appear to cut through the spiral as the time went by at different locations on the spiral. Sort of like a more compact version of Stonehenge and therefore unfortunately less to look at and less marketable. This device here however allows me to set the calendar to different times of the year. This symbol here with the two daggers on the edge of the spiral represents the winter solstice. Okay, this is the summer solstice. Over time, normally, this dagger should cut through the spiral in a few minutes, but given the more mechanical nature of this clock, I am not sure if this is still true in this particular case. Okay, this represents both the spring and fall equinoxes. Okay, this is another dagger of summer, but a little earlier in the day, about 10 or so minutes earlier. Well, I don't know exactly what this changes, if anything, so I'm setting it back to how I found it. Later on, if it does change something, I'm gonna want to have a baseline, after having explored as much as I could, to compare what the environment should look like. Also, for such a high vantage point, these tall rocks walling off this summit make scouting the area kind of hard. I'm going back down. I can probably see better from the more open paths at the lower level of the mesa. Okay, back at the crossroads and I can go anywhere. Well, there were those interesting rock slabs earlier I saw when crossing the log, so perhaps I can find those. Hang on, what's that in the distance? That is... Okay, Winter Solstice Sun Dagger. I wonder if that means anything for this area. Anyway, I'll turn around and look at the slabs first. Soon, you will be with the other. What other? Alex? Yeah, it, no, we're, we're both married to different people, and I'm only poly with respect to other women. Normally, matchmakers annoy me, but I appreciate, I really do appreciate, you trying to do something nice er, for a change, though. Now, this is interesting. Each stone slab is marked with a different sun dagger symbol. From left to right, we have the start of the summer dagger, the winter daggers, then the fall and spring equinox, and then back to summer again, but just a few minutes later when the summer dagger first would have appeared. And all these petroglyphs. Ooh, that sounds like a, um, damn. <sighs> birds, 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 I'm bad with birds. I'm going to guess crawl. Wait, I'm, hold on, I'm missing the headline here again. These things are lighting up blue. And they play sounds. 
Maybe this is a learning tool for, like, kids and stuff. Deer? Uh, well, despite farming your classic bean squash corn combo, those locations that had had access to game to hunt would be better off physically surviving than those who are just trying to survive on farming alone, especially when droughts would mess you up. It wouldn't be uncommon for an area to be abandoned because game might be scarce. Hand clapping. Oh wait, the crow is no longer blue. It looks like it can only select two sounds at a time. Anyway, that hand is clapping according to the sound, but this picture looks like a drum of some kind is underneath it. A special kind of drum? Or perhaps the ancients once upon a time discovered the sound of one hand clapping. Drips of water almost has a drips of water echoing in a cave vibe to it. Coyote or wolf? I can never tell the difference by sound alone or even sight, and that's with a full color photograph. Give me an ancient petroglyph, albeit with some sound, and I'm just lost. Well, here we have two rams living up to their namesake. Or was it their namesake that made ram into a verb? Eh, puzzle for another day. The spiral goes with the sun dagger calendar at the summit. It's just the sound of stone sliding against stone. Leaves rustling in the wind. Water puddle? Like a splash 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 water puddle? Well that sounds like a woodpecker pecking. Now that is a turkey. That sound is so, so cute. <laughs> anyway, I think that might be my favorite sound so far. Okay, what's on the next slab? Well, there are some repeats, so I'll just go ahead and skip them. Okay, that is either an eagle or a hawk. Will I be invoking the hawk spirit or the eagle spirit? I guess it's the difference between whether I will play Native American tunes or see if I can get the resources together for a tequila sunrise. <laughs> well, that sounds quite bah-ish. So, sheep it is. Wait, no, the horn. Goat it is. No, wait, hold on. Goats wouldn't have been available around this time, not until they would have been introduced by the Spanish a few centuries later. Okay, I'm at a loss. I have no idea what that animal is. Snakes. Well, Egypt taught me how to deal with them. Find red crystals powered by the gods and turn the snake into water. Burning fire, ember, cinder, fall. Some storms and thunder. That looks vaguely human. And it had the most creepiest sound. Seems about right. Perhaps this is the fabled medicine man. Okay, water again, but this time with wind forming waves. The sound of waves. Squirrel! Wow. <gasps> Oh, it's the kitty cat! Oh my gosh, there are kitties here! Oh, I just wanna, I just, I just wanna pet, 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 snap out of it, Erica. <coughs> and on the other end of that, a less cute dog. Okay, a creaky ladder. And on to the last slab where there are no new ones. Finally, I noticed this sun dagger spiral sands the dagger. At the top here is a button. I hear a clicking sound, but it does nothing. Perhaps this is some kind of sound-based combination lock? Like the numerical one in Egypt near the beginning of the landing zone that had locked me out of the time gate. That I was otherwise right near where I started. But in Egypt, I had to go around, learn a numbering system, the combination, restore power before I could finally use it. I wonder if this is similarly blocking access to the Tyne Gate. Or some other Atlantean tech. 
Hey, that's another stone circle, but without the sun dagger. I guess maybe each area is marked by a season through the sun dagger, and this area would be marked by nothing on its own, since its entire purpose of existing is just to reference the other four areas. My guess is that there might be some other areas to this mesa that would also be marked by the sun dagger. It would make sense and bring this whole place together a little bit. Oh, there's a crossbow. Really ancient cultures using that ladle, but um, in this time frame, they should have had bows and arrows by now. Wait, hold on. Just because it's horizontal doesn't mean... Okay, maybe this is just a horizontal bow. It looks like it's more in tune to fire arrows than bolts. Okay, are there any? There are. Good. Put these arrows to some good use. Now I'm wondering what I wanted to try hitting. I haven't used a bow in years. Maybe I could try bullseyeing that hole in the pillar ahead. Can I shoot through that? Last time I tried anything resembling this, it was a hole in a cactus in the same form as that stone out in the horizon that I, and I was carrying the weight of a bear and trying to get to a honeycomb. I seem to remember a past life being a red foul-mouthed bird. The naked arrow will not find its target. Wow, I was way off. Thankfully, as per the course of this adventure, a random voice comes to help me out. Naked arrow? I mean, it's got on its feathers and... Oh, right. There is no arrowhead. Well, that might screw up the ability for it to fly properly. Yeah, if this thing is light as a feather and is not weighted down at the top, it's not going through that eye. Especially not in this wind. It just occurred to me I never really thank these voices enough. Thank you, spooky person, for the tip. Now I just need to find some physical ones. Well, this boulder looks like it could be moved out of the way if I use some explosion. Okay, don't overdo it, Erica. Well, I'm unlikely to push this out of the way otherwise. It looks like there might be a cave behind it, sort of being guarded by it. I doubt that turning around and backing up and pretending that if I can't see it, then it'll suddenly stop being there is really going to work. So, well... I won't do that. There's still plenty more of this mesa to explore. impression of an acorn. Well, that is really going to troll with any squirrels. Or it's going to troll with the troll who thought they were trolling the squirrels. Because if it doesn't smell like an acorn, then for all the squirrel cares, it's probably abstract art, if they can even tell it's an acorn to begin with. Also, it looks like the acorn impression is on some kind of rough door. There is a definite difference in the rock texture. Sort of like a rounded door embedded in the stone. Yeah, from this angle, it really does feel that way. Oh, another sun dagger. This time it's the spring fall equinox marker. And do I hear bees? Oh, this is really annoyingly loud. Could you keep it down, please? Thank you. Hey, come on. At least keep it to a manageable level. Speaking of which, since you bees are so kind enough to keep it down, uh, perhaps you could part with some of your honey? It just looks so delicious. I just stick my hand in there and... If you no no I I wasn't I ow ow I mm, 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 mm. 
Mm. Mm. Mm. Suntarn's perverting the course of history. Wait, no, I'm doing that now. Speaking of which, I just really screwed up history back in Maya with my explosive personality. Okay, got it. No honey for me. Mercenaries. A crooked tree and this rock is done cracked. Better be careful. If I drop something in there, I might not be able to get it out. Shoot, is that a scorpion? Okay, be very quiet. Very quiet. Okay, it's gone. Good. Apparently there is more space between those rocks than there looks. No wonder I always get scorpions in my home. Sun dagger for summer? Near the beginning of its spiral slicing routine. That rock outcropping looks a little bit important. Actually, from up here. The ground below the mesa almost looks like really rough water. I mean, it isn't. In the middle of New Mexico, that's just stone, but definite optical illusion there. I can see what looks like a cave down there, but I can't get to it from here. <laughs> Unless I want to break my leg. Okay, first an acorn inscription, and now a feather one. Birds, five holes, maybe a feather poking out of each hole? Pressing this feather inscription makes a noise, but it doesn't do anything. I didn't expect it to. Okay, some bird petroglyphs. It's hard to make out these birds, though. The first one, it looks like um, a gull, or maybe a turkey. I'm gonna go with turkey. Uh, turkeys do have long necks, but we're still a little snood. Not, not that fun little old Macintosh game, but that red fleshy thing that's under the beak. Maybe it's just a hen. Well, I do know that turkeys they were in this region in this time frame, and they were actually quite important. Although, before making the obvious Thanksgiving feast on the turkey reference, the ancestral Pueblones didn't eat their turkeys unless absolutely necessary. The feathers, who could make a thermal weave blanket for cold nights and winters, and the eggs were a more reliable source of protein. That second bird is vaguely owlish. I'm gonna probably say it's an owl, which in many native cultures was a bad omen. I'm not sure about the Hopi, and by extension the ancestral Pueblones. The third bird, though, I, um, that's either a hawk, eagle, or crow. I cannot tell. Yeah, I'm not good with birds. I saw a blackbird near a dead tree I arrived at, and I think that was a crow. The fourth one is, um, feather on the head. Feather on the head. Head feather. Quail? I think it's a quail? Scaled quails were around this area, but I think gamble quails were the ones with the more obvious feather on the head. Some of those quails would definitely be within the region that the ancestral Pueblones live, so this adds up, but I'm not really sure. That last bird, though, definitely looks like a woodpecker. Oh, that reminds me. There's at least one story in the Sempoil tribe about the origin of fire, and it's thanks to a woodpecker who convinced a bald eagle and a golden eagle to beat each other up so he could steal their feathers, and then he convinced two rocks to beat each other up, and then one of the rocks was made of flint, so he managed to take the flint, I'm not sure how he convinced a rock to beat another rock up, given that they're rocks, but okay. And with these flints and these feathers, the woodpecker then proceeded to be the only one out of all the animals that were previously asked, this was before man was created, who could fire a line of arrows far enough at the sun to make a chain of arrows to climb in order to steal fire from the sky. 
So, according to this legend, Mr. Woodpecker brought us fire. Thank you very much, Mr. Woodpecker. I'd still appreciate it more if you didn't make me pay for your fire services with my favorite wood sculptures. So, the owl and the woodpecker are the only ones I feel reasonably confident on. Well, nothing more I can seem to do here. Well, there are still several more paths. I can head straight to the cliffside citadel, but I'd rather finish exploring the rest of this mesa. Okay, another intersection. To the right heads under the cliffside bridge and forwards heads to another natural bridge into an elevated region. But that region doesn't look like it's part of the dwellings. I'll head there first. Okay, time to go right. Ooh, a nice blue cave. Seems like there might be some little black little coves in the walls here. Okay, the presentation suggests Sword in the stone vibes. But a flashlight is a little bit less than a sword and wait, what the hell, a flashlight? That's not alien tech or ancient tech. That's just plain tech tech. Alex, did you leave this here? Well, okay, I mean, I did break an antique magic mirror in Egypt and use explosives in Maya, so... I guess Alex gets a pass. Between the two of us, we probably squashed quite a lot of butterflies on this trip. And it doesn't even work. Where's the on button? Go on, turn on, 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 on. Yeah, okay, off is okay too, I guess. Oh, I'm just going to put this back. Nah, I'll do it with some style. So, how is that throw? Nice! Landed in the same exact spot! Amazing backhanded aim! Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Wait, where did that sound come from? Never mind, I don't care. Okay, another summer spiral. This time a little further into the cutting process. This is a nice view. Some nice cactus. Oh, some petroglyphs. Looks like some animals, spirals, bugs, and people. Each petroglyph has a hand symbol, too. I think I know the history here. Okay, children, we are done with arts and crafts, so make sure you sign your work. And then the hand was added. The two remaining places are under the bridge and over the bridge. I'll go under the bridge first, I suppose. That's your problem, not mine, kiddo. Oh my goddess, what the fuck is with this the third time time? Okay, 
seriously, this guy bookended Maya and Egypt for me. But here he is everywhere. This is the third time in like 10 minutes I had to deal with him. I won't escape my doom? What doom? You were trying to hook me up earlier, and then you're complaining about your own problems, and now it's back to, grr, don't forget I'm evil, grr. Ah, shut up. Okay, I saw the top of this region earlier. When I was in the bird picture area near the beginning of the summer dagger. Oh gosh, I need to find better names for these places. Okay, from here on out, every special important part of this mesa will have its own name that I've signed it. The area with the bird petroglyphs on the wall is going to be called the Birds of Summer area for clarity. I will call the bow area the Winter of Hunting. I will call the... Acorn B area, springtime for squirrels, and um, I, I don't have a name for the other summer one. I'm sure I'll think of one later. Speaking of which, this is a bigger cave than I have seen so far. And there's no sun dagger marker here. Okay, a snake, and a series of animal footprints arranged in a circle. These animal footprints are replicated at the bottom here. Oh, they are buttons! Didn't seem to do anything, though. Oh, that appeared in the snake circle. And now it's gone. Okay, so you only like this one? Apparently, yes. Apparently, not that much. Oh, we have a peace pipe and a little fire area. It looks like a place to gather and tell stories. Well, whilst I'm naming different areas, this hereby is dubbed Storyteller Cave. But all the storytellers are gone. Unless they took some of their telepathy session tech. Wait, normally solving puzzles activates that. And that snake is so far the most interactive thing I can actually do something with. Oh, a map. It looks like the mesa is roughly mapped out according to Path and Sun Dagger, with the crevice separating the parts of the mesa being the only geologically represented thing. So we are here, the northernmost part. We came by starting at the Sun Dagger spiral in the middle. That appears to represent both the calendar and the four slabs at the base of it. We moved up, then we took a left, then we took a right. And then we entered into said crevice, and now we are near the cave, or rather in the cave. The extra lines to the left seem to suggest that these are the cliffside dwellings. This clearly shows that each sun dagger time code is quite well positioned in terms of compass routes. So each of the four directions is a different point of interest. Funnily enough, this area as a whole is in the four corners region of southwest part of North America. The Four Corners region is basically the location where the four present-day states Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico all share a corner. The ancestral Pueblones were in that region, but not centrally located there. They were more in the New Mexico part. Speaking of compasses, that foot style that worked was the Northeast one. Well, specifically the foot style that worked the first two times. And the first two times... We're going northeast if you follow the circles. Which means that if each footprint is assigned a compass direction, and this puzzle works the way I think it does, then going southeast should require a footprint of whoever is in the southeast, which is a bird print. Well, if the sounds from the slabs earlier and the petroglyphs are any indication, that at least might be a woodpecker print. Okay, so we have a moose print, I think, and then a bird print. Two moose, two bird. That worked. Okay, and the dog print, well, given the nails, I'm gonna go call that a wolf print, um, is for down. Oh, it's nice that unlike some other puzzles of the ancients, this one doesn't mind not resetting when I so much as look at somewhere else. Okay, so that is the plan. Match the print to the compass direction. I can't tell a lot of these prints. It looks like there are two dog-like prints. 
But if one is a, a more rougher wolf, maybe the other one's a more domesticated dog? Well, though, um, oh dear. The north is like a human hand, but the bulbs at the tips, they almost remind me of a frog. But that's wrong. A frog doesn't have five fingers or five little digits. It has four. Um, the northwest is a human foot. I have no idea what east and southwest are. If east was the human hand, then what would north be? Southwest looks like another bird-like foot, but it's a different kind of bird or something else altogether. I just don't know. Okay, given the circle is flattened, it almost looks like it's trying to say southeast. But I really don't want to restart this whole thing. I remember what happened when a wrong move was done at the beginning of the puzzle. Okay, good. I got it right. Whoa, that picture came alive. Forget about extruding stone. That's a cool trick of this alien tech. <laughs> what smells like smoke? Oh, the peace pipe. It's burning now. Is this... Am I going to get a telepathy session? Great mystery is mystery revealed. Is revealed. Council fires. Well, that settles it. Let's sit down. All right, ancient storytellers. It's absolutely, and most definitely, story time. Oh, greetings, children of the earth. I am the storyteller of my people, and I shall tell you of the history of creation. Before the physical manifestation of the world, there existed only the eternal void. Then the great mystery, who is the source of all? Free life, and to grandfather's son and grandmother moon. When this was done, great mystery rolled substance into a ball to form the earth, and the earth mother became home to countless forms of life. Different Native American tribes have different stories involving the creation of the world. One story in particular, once again from the Hopi tribe, descendants of the ancestral Pueblones, involved three cave layers where everything was dark, and the first travelers try to climb to the tar top of the dark cave to break through the ceiling. After several generations of progressively breaking through more and more ceiling due to overcrowding, they arrived on the surface of the earth, but it was still dark. The creation of the stars came from Coyote singeing his face, opening a jar of light that he stole, and the creation of the moon and sun, which they saw as just disks at the time, was said to be that the moon was to be made of painted buffalo skin, stretched into a disk and painted white, and flown into the sky. And then the sun took the same process but with more extravagancy, like with corn husks, red hair, eagle feathers, all kinds of bells and whistles, basically. And of course, it was painted more coppery, so that this time, this object would be brighter than the moon. Point is, there is no one creation story in Native American culture. It depends on the tribe. Each living thing inherited its beauty, wisdom, love, equality, and wholeness and understood its role in Great Mystery's divine plan. Yet the human tribe strayed from the righteous path, and three times the world was destroyed that evil might be purged. Only the people with good in their hearts reached this fourth world, and these began a great migration. 
So did our people come to these canyon lands and hear our culture flourish in harmony with Mother Earth. The ancestral Pueblos during the 1000 CE time had many times of great flourishing on periods where things weren't so drowning. Like I said, they did have more open towns originally and plenty of trade with scattered farms. Um, farms that did well could help support the people in the farms that had done poorly. Living in, as they say, harmony with Mother Earth basically meant living within your means and not fucking up your land. Still, it was a tough life. Skeletal remains show osteoporosis in many people um, of that time. Makes sense when you have to grind corn and you only have stone tools, basically a corn. Although in this region it was specifically a matati. And you have to grind all day. You're gonna have to put your back into it, lassie. That's gonna put a whole wear and tear on your skeleton warranty. As spring is the season of the rebirth, so came a time when the people were renewed. Great Mystery sent benefactors from a distant place to join our council fire in the canyon lands. They offered to plant the seed of enrichment within our shaman, that it would come to fruit within the crop of his children. His descendants grew to possess great wisdom, as our benefactors had promised. Seed they're talking about is the gene pod. So, gene pod is here. Although now I am wondering why they are here. Perhaps when Alex was trapped by the Guardian, it placed those pods back where they were, as well as reset the puzzles. Given their location, it's almost like they were deliberately put into places of protection. But if everyone is gone, why are the gene pods back there? For the sake of being in line with Alex's notes, I'm going to still go ahead and call them formally Atlantis, if the Atlanteans ultimately decided to bring these people to their homeworld in, instead of letting them populate the rest of the Earth. Why were the gene pods not brought with them? Maybe they should have. Maybe. I mean, alien tech is crazy and cool, but people are people. Mistakes happen. What if with all this, look how amazing these people are, what if with all of that, something actually went wrong? Maybe I should be taking these gene pods back to Atlantis. But if this guardian was created by the Atlanteans, why would it be hounding me? Like Alex said, he believes it might be going basically rampant. And I really don't want to deal with a rampant AI. We built towering cities within the cliffs between the salt seas. Our artisans fashioned jewelry inlaid with the blue stone. Their works of fire clay were adorned with the rich colors of Mother Earth. Our irrigated mesas brimmed with squash and maize. And with the magic of the great gift, our wisdom grew and our spirits soared. So have the seeds of our benefactors enriched and renewed our people. I wonder what time frame these Atlanteans had visited. The cliff cities that were built, that they mentioned that in this little telepathy session just building, were towards the end of the ancestral Pueblo culture. Not really enough time for too many generations, especially if these pods had granted longer life. But this is implying that this was their primary home. Hmm. I was originally thinking he was referring to the entire ancestral Pueblo culture, which spanned a good portion of the northwest part of New Mexico. But in light of this latest story, perhaps this gift manifested only in a subset of the culture. Our people made wise use of the gift. Our benefactors looked down and were pleased with our people. So did they offer us a new world, there to live long lives of peace and plenty. Fearless did our people enter into the house of light. Their bodies had no weight, but floated as an eagle feather in the wind. They passed through time and came to land surrounded by a warm blue sea. From that land, they journeyed to the home of our benefactors. Thus did the people vanish from this land, and only their echoes remain in the desert canyons. Pass through time, you say? This is the clearest explanation, which, by the way, thank you for being so clear so far. 
this is the clearest explanation so far, that the cultures vanished into the time gates. Land surrounded by warm blue sea. I'm thinking of Easter Island, actually, but that can't be because previous information shows that the Atlantan Atlanteans abandoned it and took the gift with them. So there's no gene pod there. If they were to have traveled to the home of the benefactors, in this case, the Atlanteans, perhaps that's what the mystery fifth button on the time gate does? The time gate has five buttons, of which I only ever got three to work. Egypt, Maya, and Anasazi. I presume one is for Easter Island, but the middle one with the dolphins always had an obvious connection with the water world of Atlantis. Alex keeps going on and on and on and on and on about, if only I could get that damn button to work. Well, whilst I am in the storyteller cave being told stories, there is another story I still have yet to read. It's been a long exploration. I have even looked at Alex's journal yet. This is as nice as a place as any to do so. 